Black Friday sales in full effect. If you want your brand, your business, or your song promoted, hit me up right now to find out how you can get it done for just forty nine dollars. The email is ogod at hiphopun dot com. That's ogod at hiphopun dot com. And I'm a grandma's boy. Like you get what I'm saying. Like so, me being a a demon and all that that don't fit me. I always slayed demons. I always went against the bully. I always, I'm the quietest nigga in the class until you fuck with somebody that, like, you know what I'm saying? When I see people fight the one white boy in school, I'm taking up for him. I can't stand suckers. I can't stand suckers. Suckers do sucker shit. Suckers pick on people. Suckers, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That ain't my forte. Let me ask you this, because obviously I was in the industry for the time I was, and we hear shit about the industry, and we've heard stories about Diddy in the industry in particular, and, and you said demonic that 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 kind of shit on that level that conspiracy level how real is some of that shit man how real is some of that illuminati shit? How, how real is some of that if you can talk about oh it? i can't call it but what what i can say because i've never seen you know i'm gonna be real with you i never seen it with my own eyes but what i can say is yeah that that second part i'm, mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer of that you could tell in the come on, man. You sir, you can't hide that shit, niggas character. Look at Stevie J. You know what I'm right. saying? All that shit he just did on camera the other day, man. That's homosexual activity, man. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like any man that willing to take it, and I this ain't got nothing to do against the homosexual com community because oh, I respect no, the ones that you know they live up to their shit. They got more heart than these niggas. These yeah. niggas be hiding on the cover and all that shit. These people really living this life and had to, you know, better, better, uh, better. The, the, the bad news and better the bad part of 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 being a homosexual but these niggas around here with the flogging and living under the cover and yeah man i mean it is what it is man i guess hard to talk about that community because you don't hate the people that you hate the ones right. that exploiting it yeah exactly yeah, i believe they playing with each other why i say them niggas get wet when them, you know what i'm saying at, at some point some all of them had to put their pride to the side for that mm. check, you heard? Cause I know Ooh. them parties. I know how nigga hug you too long. I know how nigga get drunk and want to touch your leg and all that. I done had to check real gangsters playing drunk around me, touching my leg. Like, boy, you all right? Mm. But that's how they test you. You get what I'm saying? So I seen the movements of niggas, you know what I'm saying? Who you think be gangster and all that. And you ride in the car, nigga touching your leg. Like, bro, what's wrong with you, bro? Like, you good? But you bro. thinking you being a bro. Nigga might be too drunk. Then you'll see a nigga leg hand move again. They gonna give you an inch. They gonna try another inch. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, mm. man, them niggas is fruity, man. Yo, man, I don't, I don't take it. You can look at him and tell he's fruity, man. Like, yeah, he, he, is, he that. I ain't never seen it for myself, but in my eyes, he that. You too, you, you too in touch with your feminine side for me, bro. <laughs> Every time he get drunk, I knew a man that 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 played like he wasn't homosexual for a long time. I'm not gonna expose him. Cause he's a friend of mine. Like I say, I don't hate gays, right. but I wish he wouldn't have pr pretended for so long. Cause I was around you, bro. And you got everybody else know what's going on. And I'm defending you like, nah, man, y'all got my dog fucked up. Every time I'm around this man, he tell me, you know, get this nigga out of our section and get this, you know, he act like he don't like homosexuals and shit. Come to find out, you know, I found out the hard way, you know, being in the house, find out the hard way. Like, oh, oh shit. Hey. Yeah, I'm so I'm seeing a bunch of niggas around me like yo, and they weak niggas. So I'm looking like, oh, y'all was his boyfriend this whole time. Oh, so man. yeah, that should be weird, man. You know what I'm saying? And Diddy, I'm pretty sure, cause I used to be one of them niggas looking at Bentley like, is you here for what you here like? You know what I'm saying? But one thing about Bentley, that bitch knew how to fight. You know what I'm saying? Like that bitch, <laughs> not no, not no girl fight. It's about boxing. Oh, yeah. And I grew up respect for him. Not, and I see now he got his family and everything, but shit, man, if he ever had the heart, that nigga the one with the stories. You know what I'm saying? He know more about that nigga than anybody. Yeah. I'm I'm not the dude that's in the hood taking orders. I'm in my hood body, like God forgive me. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing my work. I'm I'm doing all the big homie shit. I'm taking traps. I'm doing all the big homie shit. So I'm slinging. I'm I'm we we was in gunplay. Maybe fucking since we were 14 years old. Mm -hmm. So we was actually living this lifestyle. So when I went to that shit, it's like, nigga, who was you talking to? 
Right. You get what I'm saying? He just he didn't understand what he was dealing with at the time. Like, bro, you dealing with the biggest. I'm not the little nigga. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Like, I never ran around my hood. I run my hood. And, and, right. and it was just a disrespectful thing to be. I'm like, bro. But it was more like a people ain't understand the way they was putting as if as if one didn't do it, you all won't get it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it was like, is you for your team or not? So a lot of shit, I was just like, yo, I'm gonna do it for y'all. And that's what happened with the little clip where they said, Fred, come on. I was like, fuck this nigga. I've been said, fuck him on camera. He, he, you know what I'm saying? It ain't like I'm doing nothing new. I ain't trying to sound big and bad like some goofy. I've been on this. I've been saying fuck him. I've been knew he was a goofy. I've been not having respect for nothing he had going on. You get what I'm saying? And I knew he was trying us like suckers. I'm like, what the fuck does this got to do with music? Mm -hmm. The nigga had us, man, man, the people don't understand, man. We had to stay up all night learning Biggie lyrics, which I understood that. And we got to walk around Manhattan 6 in the morning Screaming Biggie lyrics loud. Never understood that. We had to watch Swiss Beats car, wash car. We had to do a lot of fucking shit that was basically like, no matter what you do in life, how successful you, successful you be, I'm going to always have this over you type shit. Yeah, that's a fact. Did you ever feel like it was a real opportunity for you guys to make it in music, or did you feel like it was more so just for Diddy to get off a reality show? Uh, I feel like we make it in music. People understand, like, you know, it was a lot of talent out there. Even King Los, yeah. all the people I seen King Los made it. King Los was out there with us. You know what I'm saying? That's why Bad Boy even fucked with him later on down the line. Cause King Los was out there with us. So it was a thing about about, about the talent for me. And for mm -hmm. some people was personality and some people was music. You know what I mean? Some people was good for TV and some people was, you know, music. And when we got ready to part, he kind of explained that to me. That I was there for music, you know. Forget all the antics and everything. He he was basically saying like, I'm only doing this shit to sell, to help you sell records, to help y'all sell records. We gotta sell records when these cameras leave. These cameras ain't gonna always be around. It's free promotion. Woo, 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 woo. So he was explaining that to me because of my attitude toward everything they had us doing. And he was like, Yo, you got to stop snapping so much. He finally had him like, Yo, come here, mm -hmm. and broke it down to me about what the whole TV. Thing was about and he was like yo this shit gotta sell records i need you to stay out of trouble man I, I'm, I'm i'm gonna have you you're gonna be a solo artist i need you to keep baths and Ness out of trouble that's gonna be my bonnie and cloud of the east coast he was like i don't care if sarah go back to detroit and her husband pimp her all kind of god forgive me that's my group member but this is the nigga word and he's like i don't give a fuck about no chopper i don't care nothing about no you think i give a fuck about dylon he's like man he's like man this shit, he was like, when this shit all said and done, you three got to sell records. Mm. Y'all still going to be bad, boy. Woo, 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 woo. And just hearing, like, the way he, you know, he was talking about people that I love, I'm like, yo, yeah. this nigga, wow, man, I can't be fucking with this nigga. See, he got to understand, I come from, I come from loyalty. Mm -hmm. I come from, you know, the streets where loyalty is important. I'm not like them other people. I'm not, you can't purchase me. I'm not. Your money don't fascinate me. These I don't even hang in clubs. I'm the nigga that's in the parking lot with a stick. Way before I met this guy. This yeah. is who I always been. I always been the shooter. I always been the one in the parking lot waiting on my niggas to come out to make sure they say I never wanted to party. So some people was excited about this, but this to me was bringing light to a face of, of shit. I had done, done a lot of dirt. When I went back home, I was terrified because it's like people can see me now and I can't mm -hmm. see them. They can see me coming. All they got to do is, hey, Freddie P, let me get a, a CD and they can shoot me or something. Mm. I had done this shit. So it was like, I was terrified. I didn't I asked everybody when I went back home. I was vest up everywhere I go. I wore a vest down to my suite down there because that's how I was living. So I was never appreciative of the fame and all that. I just wanted to, to be successful making music. I just wanted people to know that I had talent making music, bro. That's it. How was the contract breakdown? Obviously, you guys, you join the band. You know what I mean? You come into the crib. You guys are starting to create your first album, which we had. And we that shit was dope. And if we start listening to it to this day, it probably brings back some nostalgia. But talk about the business side of it. How was the contract structure? And did you guys have any real say from the negotiation? We had no say. On, yeah. It was a you take it or leave it. Because it was more of a situation. Imagine going to the 12th grade. And you done did all the hard work to get to the 12th grade. Now you going to say you quit? Yeah. You can't quit now. You done did all the hard work. You done did all the sucker shit. You done went through all the pain. And that's how it was with the contracts. It's like, oh, 
If y'all don't want to take it, y'all can leave. It was a damn if you do, damn if you don't. We're not negotiating. They'll knock certain shit off. They'll, you know, negotiate little shit. You know what I'm saying? But anything major changes, they was not giving up anything. They was not. It was. It was like y'all don't want it. Go home. You heard the nigga. He said it. He came downstairs. Y'all don't want to walk. Get the stepping. Don't do it right here. Don't talk about it. Be about it. I walked off. When that shit was over, that man walked down the street with his with his crew. And I was coming back. As he walked off, I was coming back. Because he had to talk that shit about, if y'all don't want to walk for the cheesecake, get the fuck from around. Like, he was talking his shit. Mm-hmm. Damn, I hate you. when that shit happened, dog. All right, we can hear you now. Y'all can hear me? Yes, sir. So I walked off. And um, he came down the street. And he was like, I respect that. And kept walking. You get what I'm saying? Cause everybody else was down there pleading and you know with all that. I'm like, bro, you told me that like it is what it is. Shit, nigga, I don't gotta be here. I can go back to selling dope. My thing was, let me know what it's gonna be so I can go back. Even when I, I swear to God, when I got my first check, I got I ain't get dropped off home. I got dropped off in the trap. My <laughs> niggas told me, yo, what the fuck is you doing? Yo, TV man, fuck that. Watch that back though. Burger King, cause that's what we used to call the police when they was in the air. So I'm like, watch that back though. Woo, 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 woo. I'm back to running the trap. As soon as I got up, I'm sitting on, I got a $11,000, $12,000 check in my pocket, and I'm sitting on the LTD calling shots. I ain't even had them go home yet because wow. it's what I knew and what I was used to. You get what I'm saying? I'm like, this little money ain't finna do shit to me. I'm finna put this shit up. We finna keep going. Woo, 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 woo. My niggas is like, yo, what the fuck is you doing? Hmm. I'm like, nigga, I'm doing what I know. Hmm. So, you know, his thing with me is he couldn't hurt me. He could he wanted to, but he couldn't hurt me. See, even when he returned back, when, when when me and him fell out and he returned to Miami, I knew his plan. He was gonna get, you know, somebody he went to Cali. You know, they got Cali all them deals. Cali opened the doors for Miami artists. Cause these niggas been trying to rap. These niggas been putting up posters. I was in the studio with the Rick Rosses. These niggas been had all their little campaign going. It used to be like a bunch of Miami independent labels running around battling each other, but it wasn't no universes, wasn't no Atlanta, wasn't nobody coming to get no deals out. It wasn't no nigga. The only thing they was respecting us for was Trick Daddy. I mean, not Trick Daddy, but Luke Music. Booty shit ain't, uh, ain't like, you know what I mean? Music yeah. niggas can dance too. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Only thing had done broke through was Trick Daddy with You Don't Know Nam and Thug Holiday. Mm, when I went to New York, we was bammers. You know what I'm saying? They was not taking no Florida niggas serious and no rap. But when niggas learned very fast that Florida niggas was different once I got on that camera. He's like, who this young nigga is? This nigga, this nigga's serious. He's a real nigga. You know, like, you know, like, we all know real niggas when we step in the room. You know who the steppers is. They can't fake it. Mm-hmm. Nah. So what it was he, a thing yeah. where, you know, he had a different respect for me than he had for my group. Exactly. Right. Now, if you heard a part of the question um, before we got off, right? how much did you guys make? Did you make $11,000 per show? Or Fuck was no. it no? How much man, you niggas make, was robbing us? That's why I don't like none of them niggas, man. If I ever see one of them niggas in real life, I'm slapping the fuck out of any, any one of them bad boy niggas that ain't did it. Because listen, you gotta understand, I learned a lot of shit after I left. Stevie J, all them niggas, man, them cold pussy, man. I don't fuck with none of them niggas like that. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas marks, bro. I would have never did that shit they did to us, bro. You get what, what I'm happened? saying? These niggas was making more money off. These niggas, these niggas was booking, not Stevie J per se. But all them niggas, niggas was making more money. Niggas was doing, telling us we had promo shows and they was getting paid from it. Mm. You get what I'm saying? They got us flying around the city. They getting paid off of telling us we got promo and they getting paid from it. Mm. And they was booking shows for like 70, 80 bands, breaking down 20 bands with six people and shit, keeping the rest. It was just a lot of, and they did that shit more than once. So niggas was just raping us all around the corner. We had the money. The fame was there. We, now, the one thing they couldn't take away was the fame because we had the number one show three seasons in a row. Number two at one. We were behind the Osborne. We was at, when we had the fight, I think they told us we did 16.3 million viewers or something like that. So we had the number one show like worldwide. At, not, not, not worldwide, but I'm saying worldwide on MTV. Like right. We had the number one show on MTV for a while. And you, everybody know, man, when you renew a season, you get more money. Mm-hmm. And every time he renewed the season, he got more and more and more money. So I didn't start. My hate for D- Diddy came when Sarah called one day. We was going to do a reunion. This was like uh, maybe like six, seven years. I don't remember. Don't, don't quote me on that. Mm-hmm. But a couple years ago, and she said, yo, 
She sent the contracts in the group chat of what how much he made. This nigga made over forty three million dollars on the second season alone. I was like, well, what Get the, the fuck? fuck out of here? That shit made me hate that nigga. From that day on, I wanted that nigga. I wanted to get. I'm like, yo, because I'm not scared of you, bro. And you been I'm like, and my thing with him, bro. Stop acting brand. I don't want him. He be all that. Don't act brand new with me. You know, I was never. I never was scared of you, bro. I never played with you. I never joked with you. I never tried to be your friend. Your fame never fascinated me. And that's the thing with him is he's so used to people that want to be around him. I never wanted to be around you. I never wanted to be your friend. I was a Jay Z fan. Nigga, I had more respect for fucking uh fucking just blaze and kanye before i had more respect for you because this is what i listen to young guru and i ain't never seen him a day in my life you get what i'm saying so i was never uh i was a tupac fanatic you gotta understand tupac started me rapping well dear mama is the reason i even rap when i learned that you could bring life to a beat i ain't learned from biggie god for breast the dead even though biggie the one that gave me my chance because biggie the one that you know that pumped the label that pushed me right. but i learned from tupac everything my morals in life everything like tupac was like my father you get what i'm saying and he taught me how to rap so i was never fascinated with puffy i'm from miami i'm a street nigga i don't think this shit gonna last there's some tv shit that i never even heard of i never grasped the concept of making the band because i never knew what it was to like the second season wow so yeah, i never got what he was trying mm -hmm. to do i didn't know he was trying to make a whole group i didn't know i was just battling mm -hmm. competition like bring them on i'm gonna knock them out the way like uh -huh. me. nobody's gonna do what i'm doing and at that time my energy was different like mm -hmm. my energy i was nigga i was the best performer you can ever fucking see in your life nigga i'm kicking the shoes off on stage nigga i'm 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 him but nah, i wouldn't do that shit no more i ain't no monkey i ain't dancing around for nobody no more but i'm just saying uh -huh. At that time, that's why I was. I wanted to be the best. I wanted to be respected. I wanted to be remembered. Right. Now, if you can, you said he made $43 million. That's, that's what you observed on the um the group text. How much did you get personally that year, if you can remember? Man, I could tell you this much. That nigga never bust 500000 down with the whole group. And it's six of us. Mm. And so that don't make you hate a nigga? We got 43, yeah. And you see a nigga sons and all this shit still spending that money. Mm. I my thing, what do you okay? You got paid off the first season, second season, third season. We are, we, we we got likeness now. Compensators. You get what I'm saying? You're not doing this by yourself. People actually tuning in for us now. You barely was making appearances, my nigga. You get what I'm saying? Why does the nigga with the with no talent got the most money? Is my thing. I'm interview. Uh, why the man with no talent got the most money? All these dudes from back in the days, all they did was stand on people's back. But I, I look at brothers doing it now. You got even with Khaled's situation, Khaled, why you why you so rich? You ain't you can't bust a bar, a lyric, no nothing. All you do is get a comp make compilations, bro. But you rich because they shaking the right hands and they, you know, niggas get wet when Diddy walk in the room. I ain't shit ain't never fascinate me like that. Mm. We we often hear, especially him. We talked yeah, about it yesterday. We talked about it throughout this the years of this show. Why does it seem like his name out of all is villainized as being one of them dudes that just take 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 terrible business? Why does it seem like Diddy's name is the one? It's out facts. Of all? The facts. You mm. gotta look at it. Even Kanye made motherfucking Big Sean a millionaire. Yeah. Even Kanye made John Legend a millionaire. Jay Z lowest accomplishment is worth 65 million dollars and that's j cole he's a god talk about it yeah you got rihanna who's a billionaire kanye who's a billionaire like Thanks. why you don't have one millionaire under your belt not one mm. you get what i'm saying it's the facts bro you don't deal with 40 50 artists man and, and you and you the only one that made money you the only one you the only one that's still surviving Jay Z got a list of people up on there. Even fucking Beanie Siegel made money. Dane made money. Big the whole camp made money. Petey Crack, all them boys made money. Mm -hmm. Diddy the only one, bro, because he don't have no talent. His talent is robbing people. His talent wow. is picking out the best star. I can tell you now, he he from Mount Vernon, so he can hear some shit that say, "Damn, you went through that." Boy, put that shit on track. 
sell it to the people because of his face. And you know, he the gatekeeper. Back then, everybody wanted to be down with Diddy. So if you seen with Diddy, you was some you was you was the next to blow. All you had to do was walk on stage with Diddy and you was the next to blow. That was like a method for blowing up back in the days because you know we didn't have many outlets back then. You know what I'm saying? So Puff Daddy was a lot of people outlet. He was our god in music. You get what I'm saying? So he ate off that. He ate off having resources. He ate off being the one that can walk you through the door. You don't have no talent, though. Wow, you richer than the talent because you robbed the talent. Why your son got Mace motherfucking uh, publishing? That shit don't make no fucking sense. Why your mama got our publishing? Mm. This shit don't make no sense. Why my son ain't got it? Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's just evident. Like, he's the only one that practice bad business. And that's why that nigga can't touch a bill. Because he he can't touch a billion. Because it's going to be hard to get the next hundred million. The world don't need you no more. You know what I'm saying? What I mean is, people used to need him to be seen with him. Now he's the parasite. 